the ogre gives Isabel a terrifying look and starts rushing towards her to attack. But Isabel doesn't flutter and begins to cast her magic, so she releases a huge fireball, burning the ogre with her powerful fire magic. Lucas staring at this is very impressed, stating that she became a lot stronger than he expected. The fire begins to clear out, yet the ogre remains unburnt and looks through the flame. He roars really loud, causing a sound wave which quenched the fire, with him standing really mad, which makes Isabel shout that her attack aren't effective at all, and that the ogre didn't budge an inch. And Lucas just looks at her and states that it seems like Isabel isn't aware of it herself. He tells her that the ogre skin gained a high resistance to fire magic when it evolved and that it's probably because of the drakes. Isabel asks, an attribute evolution? So she asks what they are supposed to do now. And Lucas asks her what she thinks, but she still asks him if he got an idea. Casting a different spell to the one Isabel cast it, he tells her that if fire doesn't work, then you should use ice. Isabel shiver and folds her arms, stating that just by creating those two small ice spares, the surrounding temperature dropped as if winter had finally come, and says, Frey, you really do, remind me of the great mage Lucas Trauman. Lucas lunches his ice spares at the ogre. Upon hitting the ogre, he's sent flying from the force. Isabel immediately gets excited. But all her excitement immediately turns to shock as both she and Lucas can't believe what they see. The ogre comes smashing both of them, but they both dodge before they could be hit. Isabel looking at the ogre, shouts, no way, stating that even powerful ice spares didn't manage to completely pierce its skin. Both she and Lucas try to keep at a safe distance from the ogre, with Lucas saying, geez, how tough. Isabel, about to use fire on the ogre again, shouts, asking Lucas how he can be so easygoing. She blasts the ogre with her flames, but it still has not effect whatsoever on it. It was just a means to blind the ogre so that she and Lucas could get away from its sight. The ogre looks pissed as it looks around and can't find them. Lucas still so relaxed about their situation, tells Isabel that not only did the ogre experience an attribute evolution, that its bones and skins were reinforced just like steel. So he says that it's incredible. Isabel still so worked up, tells him that this is not the time to be amazed. She proceeds to tell him that with that kind of strength, it would be best to burn it down with fire magic, but its skin has a high fire resistance. Isabel gets an idea and asks Lucas if they can try burying it alive like the last time. But Lucas replies with a silly look on his face asking her how she can be such a muscle head. So he asks her if she's trying to gather all the drakes here by using such a noisy large-scale spell. Tells her that they need to be discreet. And she replies saying that it's already noisy enough though. Lucas gets serious now and tells her that there's a special well digging technique for situations like this. So she asks, a well digging technique. Lucas comes out of hiding and tries to call the attention of the ogre, creating more ice spears. He tells the ogre to not be so mad and just chill down a bit. With Isabel freezing again, she turns to Lucas and asks him why he's using those ineffective ice spears again. He replies, telling her that they say you should only dig a single well to succeed. And Isabel say, so that's what you meant. Lucas readies to lunge the first ice spear and begins to arrange them in a single file, all aiming at the ogre. The ogre roars really loud again and begins to plunge towards Lucas and Isabel. So Lucas tells it to stop shouting that he said that they need to be discreet. He lunches the first one and says, one. It pierce a shallow hole at the center of the ogre's head, but that still doesn't slow down its movement as it still plunges towards them. And Isabel shouts in fear, you see, it's not working. She continues shouting, Frey, use another spell now. So he tells her to be quiet that he's trying to concentrate. He then sets his sight at the ogre, aligning his hand for a perfect clear shot. It's a clear shot, heading straight at the back of the previous ice spear. So Lucas shouts, two, three. The ogre still doesn't stop closing in on them. Lucas shoots another, four. It still tries to come. And Lucas shoots another, five, slowing it down. Six, seven. The ogre stops dead at its tracks, but still growling. Lucas stand with one final ice spear. Aiming straight for the ogre, he says, it's over. The ogre is already down on one knee, with fear in his eyes as it sees the ice spear heading its way. The ice spear goes straight and hits the already placed ice spears, causing the accumulated spears to finally pierce through the back of the ogre's head. Isabel is wowed and speechless, and Lucas gives the finishing blow. The ogre finally falls to the ground. Both Isabel and Lucas just stand and watch it die. So Lucas turned to Isabel and says, see that? It's best to dig just a single well. And Isabel has nothing to say to him. They both notice something from behind. It's a bunch of drakes heading their way. Looking at the drakes, Lucas says, See, what did I say? You shitty ogre. You gathered all the drakes here. One of the drakes makes a really loud sound with its mouth wide open towards the direction of both Lucas and Isabel. And Lucas say, This is quite the journey with no time to rest. The drakes have set the entire place ablaze. Many slain drakes on the ground all by Lucas. One of them still standing. 
blows down non-stop fire at Lucas and Isabel which Lucas shields away with his magic. And the moment it stops, both of them run away. Isabel sees an opening and casts her ice arrows, sending her attack, which hit the drake, but has no single effect on it. It was only to distract the drake. Then it readies to burn her to ashes with its breath, as she tries to run away. The drake is met with a surprise. It begins to fall dead from Lucas's surprise attack which it didn't see coming earlier. Lucas stares at it as if fall. It still has life in it for a little while, and finally breathes its last breath, crashing onto the ground. Lucas also lands safely on the ground beside Isabel. They both stand relieved as they have both slain all the drakes that came to attack them. But as Lucas turned to walk away, him and Isabel notices something else. It's the king of the drakes. This time around, both Isabel and Lucas are shocked. Isabel is about to shout, but Lucas immediately covers her mouth and takes her to hide behind a tree and whispers to her to stay quiet. And she replies, with a nod, MMM, the Drake King, it's not an opponent I can defeat right now, so let's wait for it to leave. That's what Lucas told Isabel as the both sit and wait quietly. As the Drake King walks by, it looks around, which makes Isabel clench really tight onto Lucas. She realizes that she's clenching tight onto Lucas's body. She tries to move, but Lucas holds her tight again and close her mouth. Because she was about to talk or shout, who knows, that's how the Drake King peacefully walks past them. They sit and remain quiet until it goes further away. Lucas finally lets go of Isabel and the both take a deep breaths and just sit there for a moment to calm down. Time passed. It's been a while. Lucas and Isabel on a mountain. While Lucas replenishes his used up mana, Isabel heals his wounds from their fights and she stares again without taking her eyes off for a while. She sighs and tells Lucas that she has finished healing his wounds. A butterfly rests on Lucas's hand. Lucas thinking to himself, says, Since we've been fighting monsters here for the last two weeks, my mind is now fully in sync with my body. That's more than enough to say that it was worth coming to this mountain. But there's still something I have to do here. The most important matter. So he looks towards Isabel and tells her that they should get going. Staring at the mountain ahead, Lucas tells Isabel that that's where Schweizer's dungeon is. Lucas and Isabel fly to the top of the mountain. As they get closer, Lucas tells Isabel to not deactivate her barrier, that considering Schweizer's personality, he wouldn't be surprised if Schweizer kept monsters in this lake. But this makes her turn to him and ask him how he knows that Schweizer's dungeon is there. He replies, telling her that it was Schweizer's bad speaking habit. So he says, the mountain that pierces through the clouds. At its peak, there's a beautiful lake. And on that lake, there's a little island. Or so Schweizer told me, saying he wanted to live leisurely in such a beautiful place. So Isabel asks, just, who? He interrupts her by saying, found it. Then they both land on the island. Isabel, looking around, she is wowed by all that she sees. So she says, what a magnificent island. Lucas then say, Schweizer, that sneaky lad, still confusing Isabel even more. But Lucas is excited to have found his friend's island, stating more of Schweizer's words. Buried beneath the island, there's a dungeon many times bigger than the island itself. Isabella asks, what? So Lucas tells her that this is just the entrance to it. That it looks humble but it's secretly extravagant just like Schweizer. She watch him talk. In her mind she questions if the person standing in front of her is really Frey. Around the island, they both walk for a while, and finally get to a huge tree with a big door in front of it. Isabel is wow, and asks how a tree can be this big. So Lucas replies, telling her that it's plain obvious that this is the entrance. Upon getting inside, Lucas is pleased that Schweizer even made stairs. As they walk further in, the lights turns on on its own. Lucas and Isabel just casually advance further downwards. She just continues to look at him while they go down and he doesn't say any word. So, Isabel finally speaks and wants to ask him a question, but decides to keep it to herself, thinking that there's no way and that she shouldn't bother herself with useless thoughts. So they continue down the stairs in silence. More lights keeps turning on. As they walk down in silence, they finally get to a destination, and stand before a huge bright door in front of them. Lucas goes to touch the door and examine it, so Isabel asks him if he knows how one can open the door. Lucas replies, telling her that it's a spell that Schweizer concocted himself and that if they tried to open it by force, they'll be obliterated. So he walks toward an orb beside the door, and places his hand on it. A bright light shines from it and, from within the light, a smoke cloud appear. Isabel wondering what it is, asks Lucas why there's smoke. The smokes come together and begins to form something. It's a program that smile at them and says, Tada. It says, one, two, one, two. Mic test, mic test. Do you hear me ha ha? Isabel makes a silly face and say to Lucas that the program is such an odd boy and asks just who he is. But Lucas doesn't reply and keeps a straight face. Isabel noticed his reaction changed after the boy appeared. She looks at him as he tremble and calls him, Frey. The boy program then excitedly says, Welcome to my dungeon. I don't know what you measly magicians are pursuing in this place but still, welcome. 
Lucas suddenly stretches his hand towards the program and tries to touch it, but his hand just passes right through the program. Looking at this, Isabel then say that it appears to be a welcome message recorded using mana. Lucas still doesn't reply but says, noisy as usual, with a sorrowful smile on his face. He says, just how many years did you cheat on your appearance while recording this message? You're supposed to be a senile old man. Staring at the program, he says, still, it's nice to see you again even in this form, and calls his name, Schweizer Stroh. Isabel can't believe that this young boy is Schweizer Stroh, so she stares surprised. Then, the program proceeds to greet them, and ask them to enlighten it on what brings them to this place. So, Isabel say that it looks like we can't talk to it, but with tears of joy in Lucas's eyes, he calls Schweizer with excitement. But the program kills their hopes of thinking they can talk to it as it tells them that they can try to tell him but this is just an automatic recording, so it'll just say it's peace. So it laughs, and tells them that no matter what they want, they will obtain it in there, because this place is his dungeon. Lucas opens his mouth, wanting to ask Schweizer some questions, but decides not to ask any more. Yet, he still asks, how? He asks the program how Schweizer died, because it's a pre-recorded program. The program doesn't reply but says something else entirely. Witches, but I seriously cannot send you inside without a little test. To enter the dungeon, you must give me the correct answers to the questions I'm about to ask. Luke is about to burst out with tears, but holds himself together as the program continues to talk. Lucas in his feelings, thinks to himself, my friend's voice and attitude, everything is the same as back then. It's as if I've returned to the times when we used to talk and laugh all together, but my voice cannot reach you. I truly am the only one alive. He gives himself some resolve, and refuses to believe that he's the only one who survived. He pictures a battle with him and his friends battling the demigods and says that those he loved and cared about return to dust with the passing of time. But the ones who made us like this are still filling the world as if nothing had happened. So he gives a really furious look and say that his enemies are still alive. Isabel notices the rage in Lucas's face, but she's too confused to say anything. Finally, the program say to them that it's uncool for it to drag out the conversation like this. So it starts with the question. The first question, what does Schweizer hate the most? Even though Lucas is still furious, he instantly answers the question, the answer, demigod. The program then excitedly says, ding ding, correct answer. Poof, the sound of the door opening. Lucas still enraged, doesn't mind Isabel and just walks in as she looks at him. She opens her mouth as if she's about asking a question, but then closes it and not say anything instead, realizing that Lucas is already entering the door, so she goes for him and shouts, Frey, just who? She never finishes that question. Lucas turns to look at her, wondering what she was about to ask. Then Isabel catches up to him and asks him the question in her mind, just who and how? She opens her mouth again but asks the question in her mind, how? Lucas just stares, waiting for her to say what she wants to say, but since she haven't said anything yet, he tells her to not just stand there dumbfounded, so he turns back and be on his way, and reminds her that they are in Schweizer's dungeon, and that considering Schweizer's personality, it's definitely not an ordinary warehouse or anything, so they do not know what kind of traps are waiting for them inside. He tells her that if she stupidly stands like that, she'll be dead in no time, so he asks her if she doesn't want to get stronger, and asks that she stop overthinking and focus. She then blush and say, yes, so Lucas tells her that they will have to see if the beginning is waiting for them inside or the end. A golem stands gallant by the door. As they reach the second door, they stand in between two golems. Lucas places his hand on the orb. Just like before, a smoke cloud appears, and begins to form a definite shape, then produces an older program of Schweizer, who just stands smiling at them. Isabel is wowed once more, then say that it's a young man this time Mel. So Lucas tells her that it's still Schweizer and that it appears that he gets older every time they pass through the doors, although he has no idea why Schweizer is doing this. This program gets straight to the point and tells them that it's time for the second question. Lucas confused, then asks it what it means by second question, so it apologizes for not explaining earlier. It begins to explain. It tells them that it has prepared greater and better items the deeper they head inside. However, it tells them that they are permitted to take only a single item with them. And if they do not follow those rules, the cute-looking golems will get quite mad. Lastly, it warns them that a single mistake, and they are out. So it asks that they be careful. Iris Pishfounder it says, shocking Lucas. It continues and say, what an annoying woman. I can never understand the thought process of witches. Here we were, struggling to save the world. And she goes over heels for a man and doesn't even care if the world ends. Lucas gives a silly look and asks, a man, 
Then Isabel turned to him and asks him if Iris Pishfounder isn't the Black Witch Iris. Thinking on it, Lucas pictures Iris Pishfounder in his head and say, a woman with ebony hair and a mysterious smile on her face at all times. The title Black Witch does fit her taste. No man in the world could ever resist her charm. Now that I think of it, I've never seen a woman as alluring as her. Thinking about Iris gets Lucas excited, but makes Isabel stare seriously at him. While he's being carried away by his thoughts, Schweizer's program then say that Iris has her faults, but even Lucas is worse. That how could he not notice Iris's advances towards him? And says, isn't he supposed to be a great mage? So much for a great mage. Luca's entire face gets seriously red as he excitedly shouts, huh, really? So Schweizer's program questions how someone can be so dense when a woman is crazy for him, asking if he isn't a magician. And says, so much for a magician, jeez. Isabel also thinks Frey is the same as Luca's in that aspect. Lucas tries to bottle up his feelings while the program continues to bash him, saying that it bets that even a golem isn't as dense as he is, then finally decides to proceed with the next question. And Lucas thinks, you bastard. The question, Iris has a contract with three powerful devils and used them to fight, amongst those three. One of them holds different weapons on each of its six arms and embodies the coexistence of. Lucas doesn't allow it finish the question, and immediately gives the answer, Asura. The program says, correct and vanishes. As they proceed, Isabel says to Lucas that he answered without even listening to the question. He still doesn't respond to her and walks in. Inside, they see different items. Isabel walks around to look at some items, before going to the next door. At the door, they meet another program. This program is a much older schweezer, and it goes straight to the next question. Isabel staring, says that it has aged again. Lucas with a straight face starts to understand why Schweizer's appearance ages the further they head inside. It is because, this place is Schweizer's diary. Looking at his old friend, Lucas say this in his mind. Just what were you thinking while creating this place? To whom were you trying to convey a message? After that moment, Lucas and Isabel proceed to clear all the remaining doors. Isabel tells Lucas that this is incredible, and that they are already in the fifth room. But Lucas thinks this is odd, saying that the questions aren't related to mage craft at all, but are about bizarre subjects instead. So he wonder what Schweizer's intentions are. But Isabel thinks Lucas is even more bizarre for answering correctly to all those questions. They are finally at the last door, and they meet another program which welcomes them to the last room. Lucas is filled with so many emotions upon seeing his friend in his old age. So he call out to him, Schweizer. Schweizer's program then calls to him as well, Lucas Trauman. Lucas is shocked to hear the program call his name. The program continues. It says, The great mage who was hailed as the strongest at the age of 40, the Grand Master of Humanity. It is my life's greatest pride and joy to consider him a dear friend of mine. And Lucas replies, Me too. Confusing Isabel even more. With tears in Lucas's eyes, he says, You're also my dearest friend. Isabel, still even more confused, questions what Lucas just said. Finally, Schweizer's program rests on its staff and says, Now the last question, what is my real name? Lucas smiles as he now understands why Schweizer kept asking weird questions. It's because he was asking questions only Lucas Trauman himself could answer. So Lucas answers the question with a straight face. Schweizer, Schweizer Wilsonman. Isabel looks at Lucas and questions if Lucas isn't wrong and why Lucas would say Wilsonman instead of Stro. Schweizer smiles and before vanishing, it tells Lucas to head inside and that everything inside the room was prepared for him. But Lucas doesn't want him to go yet, so he shouts, wait. So it tells Lucas to take care of everything. Still, Lucas stretches his hand to hold him as he shouts, wait. But it was just a program and vanishes as it should. Lucas begins to tremble again, filled with so much emotion. Only now did Isabel remember that the great sage Schweizer call Frey Lucas. They both finally enter the last room. Isabel is surprised to see how the last room looks. So she says that unlike the previous ones, this is a cozy room where one could live in. But Lucas still doesn't mind her and walks straight, until he finds a box, and says found it with excitement in his face. He pulls out a little bottle with some unknown substance in it, so Isabel asks him what that is. He tells her that it's called, Frozen River. So she stutter as she repeat his words, and asks him if that isn't the legendary solution created in the Wailing Cave, with one drop forming every thousand years. A miraculous elixir that can explosively expand one's mana channels and increase their inner mana and instantly raise an ordinary human stage to four-star with a single drop. Lucas then smiles at her and say, as knowledgeable as ever. Isabel rushed to him, shouting that she has heard that it's only an imaginary elixir, so she asks if he's really saying that this is the frozen river. Lucas smile and tell her that he absolutely needs this if he wants to reach the seven-star stage. So Isabel goes through the box and asks Lucas if that's why he came here. She pulls out a earring from the box and asks him what they are. Lucas is somewhat surprised to see the earrings. 
and Isabel proceeds to mock the earring, saying that it's such a pitiful design. As Isabel is about to put them on, Lucas says, Schweezer that old rat, he just had to leave those in this room. He tells her that they are typhoon earrings, and that he made those. Isabel looks at him and asks, you did, then proceeds to ask him what he mean by that, that how can something he made be in Schweezer's dungeon final room. So he smile, and tells her that those are earring he made 4,000 years ago, and says, that, sneaky bastard, I had nothing to do so I just created them and gave them to Schweezer since he liked them for some reason, who knew he stored it all this time and kept it safe. And Isabel tries really hard to understand what he's saying, and decides to finally ask him what she's been meaning to ask. So she asks him if he could elaborate on what he said just now for her. Lucas understands what she's asking, so to satisfy her curiosity, he tells her that he is. Isabel awaits his words with so much curiosity in her eyes, so he says, I am Lucas Trauman. Finally, Isabel is getting some clarity. So Lucas tells her that 4,000 years ago, Schweizer and himself rebelled against Demigod, Lord. Then he was imprisoned in the darkness of the abyss by Demigod and spent 4,000 years in it. But one day, a voice pierced through the abyss's darkness and reached him. It was the voice of Frey Blake. Lucas tells her that he doesn't know how Frey called out to him, nor how their minds synchronized. Nevertheless, Frey Blake spoke to me, and I answered. So he says, Frey Blake gave me this body. Isabel looks at him without saying a word. She gives a satisfied look and says, Is that so? This surprises Lucas. So he says, Huh? And tells her that he didn't think she'd believe him. But she tells him that it truly is an inconceivable story. However, she says as she smile. She tells him that there were many cases where the truth was apparent. And oddly enough, this far-fetched excuse changes everything. Staring at the earring, she says, I see. So you're Lucas Trauman. She then proceeds to kneel before him offering him the earrings. She say, I present my heartfelt greeting, Lord Lucas. Then gently picks them up, accepting it. He also goes on one knee and tells her that she should just call him Frey as usual. Then it'll help him succeed his goal. Isabel tells him that she understands, and he gives her a killer look and tells her to read the room and act like she has always done. He tells her that she gave him goosebumps just now, and for some reason, Isabel is smiling. They lit up the candle in the room. Lucas stares at the earrings thinking, then asks Isabel what she said just now about the design of the earrings being pitiful, but she intentionally doesn't reply and say, wow look at this sense enhanced bracelet, so she asks him if he also made these. He replies, telling her that those aren't his, that it's what Schweizer made. He tells her that it's the great staff, and that Schweizer used to use it like it was part of himself. She asks, staff, and say that it's a bracelet though. So Lucas gets to her and slaps it off her hand, telling her to give it here and that if she uses it incorrectly. Oh, alright, she says. Lucas puts on the bracelet, also with the earrings, and activates them both causing a display of mana flow around his body. Isabel is wowed, and, excitedly tells him that, that's an amazing mana increase, almost calling him Lucas, she corrects herself midway and says, Lucre, so he asks her who Lucre is even supposed to be, he then say that it's not his style to use magic tools, but, oh well, it's a friend's keepsake, Isabel goes back to the box and sees something which she asks Lucas what it is, he takes it from her and tells her that it's a golem core, and considering the mana inside it, he wouldn't drink from it, and tells Isabel that for now, they should just pack it all, all of it, all that's left, is Schweizer's desk. As Lucas goes to sit, Isabel tells him that she can still feel Lord Schweizer's care and affection for him through how it's shaped and detailed. He goes to open the book, and sees that. It's a diary titled, Lucas Vanished. Lucas begins to read Schweizer's book. I am pretty sure that Lord is the culprit. Other than him, there's no one who can make Lucas disappear without leaving a single trace. What should I do? This isn't as simple as a nine-star magician vanishing. He was the leader who united us. The last hope of humanity has vanished. Schweizer had recorded the events that had happened after Lucas's disappearance. The clash between the magic warrior King Cassigen and the blade King Lucid, Iris suddenly going missing. Demigod influence was already deeply rooted within the continent, and in the middle of it, Schweizer who was left alone, couldn't even trust his fellow humans. Despite their apparent admiration and respect, their inner thoughts were filled with malice as they aimed for Schweizer's death. Within his diary, the terrible battles he fought daily were recorded in detail. Lucas read about his friend's life as he fought alone. Within the book, Lucas was our leader, someone who could never be replaced. I tried to bear his burden in his stead, but as time went by, every second showed the reality of my lacking skills and the emptiness Lucas had left behind. Lucas trembles as he reads these words, and Isabel burst out in tears. In the book, Schweizer says, I'm sorry. An image of Schweizer writing these final words, I'm sorry, Lucas, I couldn't do it. Lucas trembles after reading. With tears in his eyes, he says, You moron, why did you go this far on your own? 
Isabel wants to console him and she calls him Frey. As he gets up, he say that he only realized how it felt to be left alone after experiencing his current life. He places his hand on Schweizer's book and say that he shall inherit the loneliness Schweizer felt, along with Schweizer's will. Still with tears in his eyes, he says, Watch over me, I'll definitely hit the demigod straight in the face. Isabel bends her head because she feels bad and doesn't know what to do. But as her head is down, she notices something and immediately calls him, Frey. She tells him that there's another page left. The page says, To the one reading this, you must complete Anastasia, I have left behind all my records in there. In my greatest masterpiece, Anastasia. Isabel asks Lucas if he knows what Anastasia is. He doesn't reply at first and just goes through his bag. He pulls out the golem core that she showed him before. On it is written, Anastasia. They head back after taking all that they could from the final room. Isabel tells Lucas that the gem must be a golem's core. Lucas replies, tells Isabel that Schweizer has reached the pinnacle of puppeteering. For him to call it his greatest masterpiece, it begs the question, just what is this Anastasia? Isabel about to speak, pauses for a second, then, says oh, right, and asks him that if it was him, couldn't he complete the golem using this core? Lucas doesn't respond but gets a weird feeling. So Isabel asks him what the matter is. He recalls when he made a golem. Showing it to Schweizer, he says, Oi, Schweizer, observe the very first golem the great me has created. Schweizer laughs really hard and asks him if he's really calling this thing a golem. Lucas gets furious and asks Schweizer what's wrong, telling him that it's an avant-grade design with a cubist approach. But Schweizer doesn't stop laughing, and tells Lucas that he shouldn't make golems at all, and that he should just ask him, Schweizer to make them for him next time, that he can make something better than this just by biting his tongue. But this provokes Lucas even more. Schweizer doesn't stop laughing at Lucas. He laughs and laughs, and even made fun of him, which makes Lucas ask him the last time when he got hit with a fireball. He says, never mind. No use asking, just take this, and blast Schweizer away. Back to the present, he laughs as Isabel wonder what's wrong with him and call him, Frey. He puts his hand back in his bag and says, anyways. He pulls out the core and say that if they complete this, they'll get to know about the unrecorded history. Confused Isabel asks him what the unrecorded history is, and he tells her that it's everything that happened while he was locked in the abyss. As they approach the exit, Lucas senses something bad and pauses. Isabel confused as to why he stopped, so she asks him what's wrong this time. He then call her name, and tell her that as soon as they're outside, she should head back to the village immediately. Outside is a lot of drakes flying around. Lucas and Isabel stand at the edge of the mountain. Then Isabel notices it and says, That's, it's the ginormous drake, standing right in front of them. Lucas stands unfazed and asks the drake if it was waiting for him, and calls its name, Drake King. Lucas asks it if it was waiting for him. It doesn't respond, so Lucas tells it to answer him, and tell it that he already knows that it's an intelligent monster. The King Drake is stunned that Lucas knows this, so it laughs and says, What an interesting one, and says, I was waiting for you, you who fearlessly stepped into this mighty Torcunda's territory. Lucas gives it a fierce look and say that it must have noticed them back in the forest, so he asks it why it didn't attack them back then. Isabel in fear, notices that Lucas's voice is shaking, and say to herself that she has never seen him this nervous before. The King Drake laughs at Lucas and tells him that he was waiting for him to exit that place, and that all those who exit that place always have something good on them. Lucas remembers that he is in possession of the frozen river, so he tells Torkunda that he finally understands how it grew so big. He say that it has been hunting humans by using this dungeon as a trap. The drake stands ready to attack. Then Lucas says, The dungeon my friend treasured more than his own life. You've been using it to fill your insignificant stomach. Lucas gets really mad and tells it that it needs a little beating. The drake pauses in shock for a while. And think, those eyes. The eyes reminds it of when someone, Iris Pishfounder, beat the shit out of it and tell it to stay down while she's still being nice. And when Iris Pishfounder told it that she'll kill it if it keeps coming after her. So it tells Lucas that it doesn't like those eyes of his. The Drake King, Torcunda, about to breathe fire on them. Lucas tells Isabel to run. She says, but, about to argue. But Lucas tells her to run now that he's honestly not confident. So he asks that she leaves now. But she tells him that. That's exactly why she shouldn't. The Drake King, Torcunda, then say that these kind of people tastes best. And says, now allow me to eat you. About sending its fire breath attack. Lucas raises his hand and activates the bracelet. Then it turns into its original form, Schweizer's staff. So Lucas immediately begins his attack. He uses earth magic to create a giant fist to punch and close the mouth of the drake, preventing it from sending its fire breath. The king drake growls in pain. 
so Lucas uses that opportunity to turn to Isabel and ask her if she doesn't understand, since she won't go. He calls her a leech and tells her that she's being a hindrance. Lucas's words pierce Isabel's heart and tears fill her eyes, but she holds herself together and flies away, telling him that she'll be back as fast as possible. This gives Lucas an opportunity to focus fully on the battle. The Drake King calls Lucas a wretched bastard and immediately unleashes his fire breath attack which also follows with a heavy wave in force, blasting away the surface of where Lucas stands. But Lucas dodges. But Torquenda doesn't stop. It continues to chase after Lucas with steady ready fire breath. It sends multiple attacks at Lucas but Lucas manages to dodge them all. The battle continues and Lucas keeps dodging the King Drake's attacks without an opportunity to attack, trying to get away from the King Drake. He is met by more Drakes ahead, which he finds very annoying. So he activates both his earring and staff. He casts a spell to instantly produce ice spears, then another spell, to create a very powerful wind storm. The drakes are left with nowhere to run, growls in fear, so Lucas uses the combined magic to blast them of the sky. The spell even goes for those that tried to escape, and shred them to pieces. With Lucas's path being cleared, he continues to try and get away from the king drake, thinking to himself that killing these small fries won't change much, that he needs to deal with the big guy to end this fight. He goes head to head with the king drake and begins to cast a spell, saying that he needs at least three seconds to explosion. And by calculating the speed and flight direction, the first count, three, the second count, two, the third count, one, and the final count, zero. So Lucas shouts, now, explosion, please like and subscribe for the next part.